Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I got a really exciting video for you today. I have, I have a friend, Bill Allen, with me. How are you doing today, Bill? Good, how are you? I'm doing very well. H happy New Year. We got to say that it's 1231, the last day of 18, so Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. I'm excited for, uh, to start fresh tomorrow. So. <laughs> I, like, I like you. You, you just have a, a precise attitude and very focused. I've watched you on, on Facebook and social media, and, and we have some common friends. And what you just said there is exactly how you are. You are a machine that just goes after it, very process-oriented, and, and just moves forward. So uh, very impressed. That's it. I'll tell you, I think the most important thing is to set a goal and take action on, on doing it. So um, we, had a pretty, we had a pretty fun weekend that I'm getting ready to share in one of our Facebook groups about what we did with uh, – my son and uh, and it came together at the last minute and we just jumped on a flight and went and did it because uh, you know we're entrepreneurs we can do whatever we want right so yeah. we spent two days uh, got on a flight up to Maryland and uh, it was my goal to buy an airplane by the end of the year so uh, we put we got it done and we got it and picked it up and flew it back yesterday as a family my dad my my son and my uncle so uh, really cool it was a goal of mine um, and we we accomplished it with one day to spare. So. There you go. I actually had that on my notes to ask you and follow up about the plane. So that's that's yeah. a great story. You want to? Sh what, what, I mean, what does it feel like to to buy a plane? I mean, I have no idea. I mean, is that like? Well, it, you know, it's funny because it, it it reminds me a lot of my real estate journey. So you know, I just kind of you know three three and a half years ago, and I'm sure we'll get to it at some point. But yep. we just started this business and it just went. I just dove head first and. I don't know, you know, I've been flying for the Navy for a long time, for uh, a little over 15 years. So I'm used to showing up, the plane's ready, there's gas in it, I don't pay for anything, you know, it's just show up, get my job done and go home. Um, and it's a totally different world flying in the civilian world and I don't know anything about it because I never really got into it. Um, I've never paid for my own gas, I've <laughs> never flown uh, my own plane or anything. So I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and so it was a lot like the real estate journey where I just said, look, I'm going to do it. I'll find out the information about it and we'll just get it done. We'll just take action and go start looking. And at each step was confusing. I had no idea what it was all about, but, um, I showed up yesterday and even two days ago, I called the guy who's helping me find, find and buy the airplane. And I'm like, Hey, I don't have any headsets, man. Are there headsets in the airplane? And he's like, well, you don't have any headsets. I'm like, no, I don't have headsets. Like, He's like, oh man, I'll ship you some. I'll overnight them there and, and we'll get them to you. And they didn't show up yesterday. So fortunately <laughs> I found, I, I got home from Disney on Friday night. Uh, me and my son were on an airplane on Saturday morning and I found in my storage unit, the old headset that I used to fly with when I flew in 2002, trying to learn how to fly. Uh, just found it in storage and brought it down there and we flew it back yesterday. So it feels good. It's, it's pretty cool, but I don't know. It's a, it's a totally new world, right? Of new yeah. stuff. So I'm learning about it as I go. So I'm going to fail. I'm going to screw things up. I'm even today. I was like, I don't even, how do I even log the time that I just, <laughs> do I just, I have a little log book. I guess I just keep track of it there. So, I guess. Yeah. Um, well, I'll figure it out as I go. There you go. I like it. Well, let, let's talk about your, your, you know, being a real estate entrepreneur. Cause uh, what, what you've done is outstanding. Let, let's share a little piece of, you know, Share what 18 looked like for you because you posted some numbers and some business stuff, I think a couple of weeks ago. But, you know, give, give a feel for the people watching this, you know, who Bill Allen and his team are and, and what y'all are doing. Yeah, I, I own a company called Blackjack Real Estate. We're in three different markets. Um, in 2018, we were. So we're in Nashville, Tennessee, and that's actually where I live. I moved there two years ago. Um, uh, Nashville, we're in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and we're in Pensacola, Florida. So the panhandle there um, just south of uh, Alabama. And uh, we do the about half of our business in Pensacola. Uh, we went into Chattanooga two years ago. We went into Nashville this year. Um, this year we'll do uh, a little over 170 transactions. So probably I think we're like 172, 174, something like that. And uh, we'll do a, a total gross profit to about 2.35 million uh, is what we're. And we've got some we've got some deals to close today. And uh, so if those go through, I think we'll look right around there. Um, so yeah, we do about you know anywhere from you know, 15 to 20 transactions a month, something like that. Um, 80, about 80% of it is wholesale deals and the, the rest are fix and flips down in Pensacola. Uh, we, we wholesale some stuff too, where we just buy it, clean it up and put it on the MLS. So right. it's kind of the business model, all pretty much all single family houses, occasional du duplexes and triplexes and quads if we like. Yeah. So residential, yeah. 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 Single family residential, it's pretty much it. And you know, 
Uh, let me make sure this is correct. Yeah, to date, this is the, you are uh, you know your team is the biggest one that's that's been on these interviews. So give us a feel. You know, we have a lot of people that have talked to us that are doing 15, 20, maybe 30 a year, kind of a one, maybe two person show. What does it take to, to do 20 a month, right? Do you, do you have a team or is it all virtual assistants? What, what does that all look like for you? Yeah, we have a team and it, I think it kind of depends. If you're doing, what I see is we're, we do a lot of volumes. We have to do a lot more houses in some of our markets because our spreads aren't as big as what a lot of people, I know some people that do 12 to 15 deals and make as much money as I do. And they're, you know, two or three people. I've, I've got 15 people that work for me. So um, the team, it started with me and one other person um, as, as we grew it. But at, over time, it just got a little bit bigger. And actually, this year, we took a step back and got tried to get a little smaller and a little smarter and get the right people on board, uh, just because we were growing a little bit too fast and too big and the expenses were getting kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I would say I probably have about a million dollar payroll, if not a little bit more. So that's kind of what that looks like. So when you see, uh, you know, uh, I'm not here, um, you know, pulling two and a half billion into my bank account, um, just, just the payroll. And then we have some bonuses and commissions and things like that. And that's before any marketing expenses and stuff. So it's a pretty big operation. Um, everybody's virtual. We don't have an office. Um, and we, we're kind of live in the three different cities. So I've got some people, uh, here in Nashville. So it was mainly predominantly Pensacola when we started and then we, kind of moved up to, as we, as I moved to Nashville, uh, and my COO is here in Nashville, we started, um, adding a little, a few more team members here in Nashville and the surrounding area, um, mm-hmm. just cause it's local to us and a little bit easier. So we're split about half Pensacola, half Nashville now. And then our Chattanooga sales and acquisitions rep is in Chattanooga. Very cool. So you mentioned that Pensacola was one where you may flip is that, if I remember right, is there a reason why you would flip in Pensacola and not, um, Nashville or, or Chattanooga? Is it the spreads or um, what is it? Well, I, you know, I, I, I lived in Pensacola four different times and I actually moved here two years ago from Pensacola. So I know it really well. I have some connections there. Um, a lot of what we built, we, that's where we started. Yeah. Um, and so, so that's kind of how it grew. Uh, what I found is um, flipping and wholesaling are two totally different businesses in my mind. People yes. might try to do, you know, combine them or do a hybrid of the two and, and think it's easy, but you really have to treat both of those as, as separate businesses. They have different infrastructure that's needed, different systems and process and procedures. So what I found in flipping is it's, it's not as easy as you think, especially when you try to do it virtually. Yeah. So the struggle that I have is, you know, is like everybody else, finding good contractors, good labor, good work, people that do quality. And, and if you're not there to check on it, then who is the person that's checking on the quality of the product that you're putting out? Yeah. And who, who's telling you the truth? So, you know, going to three different, you know, two other cities and, and actually flipping there is a totally different business than virtual wholesaling, basically, yeah. um, where you have, and, you know, depending on how you define that, you know, uh, we have a couple people on the ground, so we're not technically, you know, virtual, virtual, but, um, you know, not being there to actually see what other people are talking about is a challenge. So um, I've had, I, I flip, even flipping from, Pens- you know, owning the company, here in Nashville for the last two years and actually renovating and reselling houses down in Pensacola has been a challenge. I'm sure. So, um, so that, I think, I think the big thing is that infrastructure and building out a whole nother um, set of contractors and process and procedures here in Nashville. Uh, I don't know that we won't, uh, but also the price points are a lot higher here and mm-hmm. um, the margins, you know, people are, are paying a lot more money for houses now. So the margins are almost as good wholesaling here as they would be flipping. So um, in order to really squeeze a, a lot of money, I think out of our deals here in Nashville, it would take a lot more work for me. Mm-hmm. And, um, I don't know, we just, we're focusing on what we do really well. And I think that's wholesaling. Well, I mean, you, you, uh, your focus again is, is admirable because a lot of the wholesalers that, that I know and meet, and, and again, they're not doing your volume. So maybe, it's, maybe they're just going to figure it out when they, when they, you know, maybe next year or the year after is they all seem to want to move from, Hey, I've been a wholesaler for two or three years. And you know, let's say they're having, you know, they're making six figures and they're, they're, they're doing fine. Right. But for whatever reason, at some point they've all told me that they want to start flipping. And, and I think it's that like, to your point, that's a distraction, right? Cause it is different systems, it's different errors, different. You're going to skin your knee. Your hold time is a lot longer, your hard money time. And there's just all these other variables that you really don't have to consider uh, in wholesaling. Um, you agree? Yeah. You know, I learned, uh, I, I do agree. And I, I learned a long time ago that number one, I'm a deal junkie. So uh, I want to do lots of stuff. <laughs> I have, I have screwed up a lot of deals because they were the wrong fit for what I want to do. So 
really when you build out a core focus and all the process and procedures of what you're doing, if you want to build a business, okay, like the, the business owners that I talk to, um, I actually may want to, you know, flip less and wholesale more or like, right. what is your, your core business? What's making you the most money and what do you enjoy doing? Right. So for me, I, the grass is always greener on the other side, I find. Yeah. Um, and I learned that a long time ago. Like I, I was a helicopter pilot in the Navy, always wanted to fl go fly F-18s before that. Um, a anything that I do, I, I look at somewhere else and there's, there's somebody that it looks like they have something better than what, what I have right now. Right. And I think that's a lot of times what happens with, um, wholesalers and house flippers, um, house flippers think wholesale, like when I was flip, so I started flipping and I thought a wholesaler just was falling backwards into these deals <laughs> and thing. they just made money hand over fist for doing nothing. And now I realize that that's not the case. Uh, and a professional wholesaler, like somebody who's really good at it and that's what they do and that's their business. Um, it's a totally different ball game than somebody who's just flipping a couple or wholesaling a couple properties here yes. and there and they want to start flipping or they want to do some other stuff. And that's fine. You know, I think that, you know, if you want to dabble in that, but if you're building a business, like focus on what you do and what you do really well and uh, don't get distracted. Like I, yeah. I get distracted all the time. I, yeah. That's, that's why, that's why I love this, my COO that I have because he keeps me focused. You know, I've come up with these crazy ideas of what I want to do. And he says, I don't really know that we, we could have the capacity to do that right now. And keeps me kind of down to earth a little bit. Yeah. So, and I think that's important. I mean, us as entrepreneurs and business owners, like that's our, goal. that's our job is yeah. to have big ideas. There you go. You know, there these you go. visionaries have big ideas and have these crazy things that they want to do. And if this guy wants to, you know, wholesale in 10 houses a year, I want to go flip 50 next year, then that's the kind of problem that us as entrepreneurs have. I, um, I, I agree. How about, uh, do you, do you hold anything? Like, have you come across and built a rental portfolio or anything of that nature? Yeah, that's how I started. Actually, I started, uh, -huh. uh I was, you know, in the military moving every nine months, one year. So I would buy a house. I'd, I'd use a conventional loan in the beginning. So I'd yeah. like save up money, put 20% down, I'd buy it. And I, I figured if I got 10 like class A single family properties, um, then I'd be, that would be my retirement with, along with the military retirement. And that's kind of my mentality when I started where I'm making like 500 to $600 a month per house. So then I have like five or 6,000, you know, once I got to 10 per month and, uh, and that would be it. So I kept running out of money and then I started realizing I could raise money and I could buy it cash and then I could refinance my money out of it and yeah. not have any money in it. So I did that a couple of times. I got to 10. Um, and then I got tired of being, a. Uh, I was doing it all myself. So I was, uh, landlord. I was, yeah. I was uh, getting the people in and I was virtual and it was a whole nother business model, right? Uh, exactly. uh, what I was doing. And then this business took off. So I actually just sold, I sold all my houses. I only have one more. I only have one. Uh, actually I bought one in Memphis this year, uh, a turnkey <laughs> from another company. Um, just to see how they, how they worked. I, I like to hack other people's business models and uh, stuff to see if I want to do it. So yeah. I bought one in Memphis and they have a great process and procedure to fix it up and sell it. It's, it's incredible. So um, if I'm going to design that in another city, I wanted to see how the pros do it. So, and I'm getting off track here. So <laughs> I, um, and I'm good at that too. So I, uh, yeah, so I sold all those. I sold uh, nine in the last uh, year and a half because the way I looked at it, I, if I'm going to build a rental portfolio, it's not going to be a, a class A property, um, nice house that I would live in. So a lot of these were houses that I lived in before. Yeah. Um, and what's happening is I'm starting to get to the end of my, um, um, my CapEx type. You know, I just have to start replacing roofs and air conditioners and stuff yeah. like that. And, yeah. And the market was so good that I was just going to take my chips off the table there and start investing other ways. And I can make a lot more money on my money right now. Oh yeah. Lending or uh, using it in my own company or however I need it than having all that equity tied up in all those rental properties. So, um, but I am, uh, I'm partners in a lot of different things. So I have, uh, uh, I own 40% of a apartment complex. I have some uh, other uh, passive investments in apartment complexes that people have brought me some deals on. And we're actually building 1200 storage units down in Orlando, outside of Orlando now wow. with uh, some other members of my mastermind groups. There's like four of us that are, and maybe there's six of us that are involved in this project of raising money and, and getting this done. So, yeah. So again, um, so that's kind of like my passive income. Stream. Yeah. Yeah. So again, for, for people watching is what I took from that is, is he's, focus on being very good at what he does, creating a business and process and all of that. But he does take, you know, what he's earning from that and puts it into passive income because that's, you know, you don't want to keep working a job forever. 
hundred percent. The, the business that I run, the wholesaling and flipping business is, is active. Um, it's got a little more passive for me, um, just because my COO does most of the day-to-day -day activity now mm. and the team. Um, so I can actually pull my, I probably work three to five hours a week on that business. Um, and so it's, but it, it can, it can fold, right? There's yeah. These things that are active, this is active investing as the market gets tighter, it gets, things get tougher, competition increases, then our market share goes down. So right. uh, we have to be innovative. So yeah, I absolutely. Every dollar I make, I try to make two bucks on it. So how can I figure oh, out? I love that. that. Every dollar um, makes $2. There you go. Very cool. So let's just, if you're running a business, it should be $3. Uh, ah. because some, you know, all your team is going to take at least a buck. So. <laughs> that's, that's one net dollar. <laughs> one net extra. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. You, you want to net that extra dollar. I like it. So give us a feel, right? You're doing all these deals a, a month. Um, you know, how does it all start? Top of funnel, we talking 10,000 mailers a month or, you know, what does it uh, yeah, kind of we start do, to lead? We, no, we, do, we do over 100,000 a month. Um, okay. And we do, we, so we do a lot of direct mail. So people ask me all the time, like, what's your marketing channel? What's the best source? Uh, we do a lot of direct mail. Um, yeah. That's probably about 70 to 80% of what we do. I, I found that that was kind of my niche. I, I learned how to get really good at it, um, how to run the numbers and look at KPIs, like you talked about the funnel, right. to make sure that we're hitting... Uh, you know, the return on spend that we need. Um, so that's it. We do, we probably do about 110 to 120, something like that. And about half of that is in Nashville. Um, okay. So when we went into Nashville, we really had to in dial up our, our mail uh, spend. Um, so, and we also do some pay-per-click advertising, online uh, marketing, Facebook, stuff yeah. like that. Um, yeah. We try to network. I try to buy from realtors, other, I buy from other wholesalers down in Pensacola, sure. we buy uh, off the MLS still, we still buy a couple deals off the MLS. Um, and you are a deal what, junkie. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, that's it. I, I run a marketing company. Like there we got to figure out how we're a marketing and sales company. So, uh, there's three arms to our company, marketing, sales, and operations. And we got to be really good at those three. And like any business, if uh -huh. somebody thinks that they're in the business of selling tacos, they're not, or, right. you know, boats or cars or airplanes or whatever. They're, they're not, they're in the business of marketing sales and, and, uh, efficiency. So, there you go. um, so that's what the top of our funnel looks like a, a ton of mail. We spend a lot of money on, on marketing, probably, you know, 50, 60,000 a month on overall marketing costs. Wow. Very cool. So let's, uh, let's rewind the clock to maybe your first six months in the business or so, because right now I think a lot of people are going, Oh my God, right. I, I'm never going to be this, this individual. So, you know, tell us how you got started. Cause I'm sure you didn't spend 50 grand the first month on marketing. No, I'm not, not even close. In fact, my first six months, I remember it very well because I had a $30,000 budget. So I said, I'm going to set aside $30,000 for six months. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to flush it down the toilet and I'm going to move on with my life. And I'm going to say that I did it. I tried and it doesn't work. But uh, there's a lot of people that I talk to that do this for a month or two or three and say it doesn't work. Uh, I didn't put the first uh, dollar into my bank account for four, a little over four months. So um, had I quit at month three, we wouldn't be having a conversation right now. I'd still be flying airplanes for the Navy full time, probably, and just waiting for my retirement. Right. I'd still have my 10 houses and that would be it. Right. Um, so I, I knew what I, I knew I wanted to do this. I was a, uh, I was a full time pilot uh, for the Navy at the time I was training students in Pensacola and uh, I didn't have a lot of time. I worked, you know, 10 to 12 hours a day, five days a week uh, flying airplanes. And I wanted to get started in real estate. I wanted to ramp up a business. And I saw all these guys. I listened to podcasts, listened to you know YouTube videos like this. I listened to all this stuff. And there's these guys that are talking just like I was talking, like I'm talking now, right? They're right. doing. I, I heard I would hear a guy said he's flipping a hundred houses a year and you know never um, never going to see him. And I'm sitting there driving to the one flip that I was doing that year on the way to work, stopping, gcing it myself you know, and people wouldn't show up in the morning. So I'd have to go to work, fly 10, 12 hours and I, on the way home, I'm stopping by. Okay. Well, they didn't do half the stuff that they were supposed to do. And I was yeah. just banging my head against the wall. So I, 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 I spent, I spent, I spent money. So I joined a mastermind group, a high, high end mastermind group that I had no business getting into, frankly, um, to, to surround myself with those kind of people, uh, the people who are doing a hundred deals that aren't, aren't seeing the house. And uh, they're working three hours a week in their business. And I wanted to just be that person. So I figured, okay, I'm just going to jump in. I know I'm going to bet on myself. I'm going to invest in myself and I'm going to do it. So I joined a mastermind group. I spent, uh, at the time, I spent $25,000 for one year membership in this group, right? So crazy to me, but I, I was flipping one house a year. I had a full-time job. 
um, I took I took the profits from my last deal and said I'm going to invest it in myself and my business. So then, uh, so I did that. I set aside thirty thousand dollars. So I had five thousand dollars a month for six months to, for marketing and for my staff. So I needed somebody to answer the phone because I flew <laughs> twelve hours a day. I can't pick up the phone inside an airplane. So I knew people are going to be calling me and. I had to figure out, I needed kind of like this office admin person. So I paid her $500 a week. So 2000 a month. So now I only had $3,000 a month to spend on marketing and advertising and, um, and, and, and operating expenses. So CRM, uh, phone systems, any backend uh, item I needed. So, you know, very quickly I got to about 5,000 mailers a month, five, 6,000 mailers. And at that time I didn't know that I could spend less on my mail and pulling lists and stuff like that. So I paid way too much and all that stuff. So that was kind of the beginning. We sent out mail. Um, uh, Dee Dee, she, she still works for me. Um, oh, nice. She would take the calls and, you know, enter them into the CRM. And I was also building the back end of my CRM myself and all the stuff. <laughs> it was oh, a disaster. Um, but we were figuring it out together. I, you know, I was building a buyer's list. I was doing all the things that a new wholesaler does. And so, I, and but I knew I was surrounded by these other people who were doing it and they were giving me the advice. It was like, I bought speed. Like I was able to, if I needed something, I had it. If I needed um, advice, I got it. If I needed a document, it was there. So it was very uh, nice to have a network to, re to rely on that are, were actually in the business. So, so for me, I saw a guy who was doing two or $3 million a year. And I said, I want to be that person. So I just stole his business model and everybody else's. And what I did was I created this little Frankenstein business. Like what I liked from everybody else's, I just took it and then made it mine, tested it in my laboratory in the area that I was working to see if it would work there because they were in bigger cities. I was in Pensacola is only about 350,000 people. Hmm. So I was trying to just test stuff to see if it would work. And um, you know, just, you know, sheer like determination and, and fast action. I think right. that was the key. We just, we just, I just kept going. I just said like, I'm not going to quit. I know that I can win this game. And, um, I'm, I, you know, I'm very, uh, uh, I'm a very motivated and uh, competitive person. Yes. So I think that helps, uh, you know, when you're really competitive, I think, you're constantly in a room like that. You're measuring yourself up against everybody else. And when they're crushing you, then it just <laughs> motivates you to start, start doing more. And, um, I, I just wasn't going to take no for an answer. So we just kept working, you know, following up phone calls, phone calls. And I still remember the first uh, deal we did it. We put $10,000 in the bank. I was about $40,000 out of, oh, no, I'm sorry. I was about 20,000 out of my pocket at this time, four months in, right? A little right. over four months. And then we put 10,000 in the bank. And that, that, after that first deal, that first wholesale deal, um, that, that's, that's the difference. Like if, if somebody's listening to this and they've done zero or they've done one, like that, that difference is huge. Huge. The yes. zero to one difference is bigger than the one to 20 difference. Agreed. Like once you do that deal, you know that it works, you know that you've done it from there, like you can scale from there. Like you can build on that. You can, you, you know how you did it. You know, there's going to be new things that come up. Yeah. But that like one deal, that's, that was it. After that, I went, oh man, we can do this again. I still remember the guy who bought it because I mean, without him, and I I've talked about this before, like with, without that relationship that I met this guy, talked to him, built a relationship. It was one of his uh, family members that bought the house. But that temp, I mean, that deal, I still remember, I think that was the quintessential turning point of a business owner yeah. was that. So for, a little over four months and just, sending mail, following up and, you know, going on appointments. And even when I, I'm to be sitting there with dinner with my, my wife and my son and I like, got a call. I got to go. Yeah. And we got to go on the appointment. And I told her, you know, Hey, I'm going to be working a 60 hour a week job and I'm going to be doing this full time. You're probably not going to see me too much for the next six months to one year. Yeah. Um, but you know, hopefully by the time our kids start remembering everything, you know, yeah. four or five years old, daddy's going to be around all the time. Yeah, exactly. You're, and you're so right. That first deal, that proof point is, um, it's, it's going to be that linchpin for you, right? It's like, okay, I got it. I'm going to go forward. And then also you got to remember, right? You were four months in, right? You were 20,000 mailers in, you had a, you already had a, uh, an employee and you know, you kept going. Uh, not, you know, a lot of people think this is, uh, they, they see all these posts and videos like we both watch and, and have seen and they're like, well, it's been three weeks. I haven't, nothing's happened. My phone hasn't rung yet, right? They're, 
they, they need to see that it takes time for everybody. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, it, it does. I mean, and you know, it was funny because at those meetings, I would see these guys that, you know, the, the, the owner of the mastermind group and, and the coach, um, they're just sitting there at the table doing nothing. <laughs> and I'm on my computer all the time, like trying to get deals done while people are presenting. I'm being completely rude. We all are, you know, yeah. we're all trying to figure this out. And then I would get an email blast from a, a, a house that this guy's company is selling and he's sitting right there doing nothing. <laughs> And it's coming to my email. And I was just, I said, you know what? Like, that's what I want to do. You know, I want to be there one day and I don't want it to be very long. And it took about a year and a half, two years. And now, I mean, I go to the meetings now and my computer's away and my phone's away. And nice. You know, I just sit there and we're sending deals out and we're making money on a regular basis. So it, it, it can happen. And it's not, I don't think that, you know, um, any of us, like, the, the cool thing about that, when I got into this world and, and surrounded by those people, it's they're, they're great people. You wouldn't, if you sat next to them on an airplane, they're wearing t-shirt and shorts and sandals. You have no idea who they are. Right. Um, they're just so down to earth, you know, just great people that you want to spend time with. And, and that's, uh, that's the, that's the thing, you know, it's not people. And I mean, I know we opened this with, I bought an airplane. <laughs> um, but I mean, you can get an airplane for the cost of a car. If yeah. anybody's wondering, it's not a citation jet. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's not a Gulf stream. It's not, uh, so it, it's, it's, it's just kind of everyday people doing business and, and, and being proud of what they do. And the, the thing that changed for me was, uh, from kind of, it started with, I want to make more money and then I want some time freedom and things like that. And then now it's become, I want success for the people that work for me. You know, I, I build a company that I'm really proud of. And what makes me the most happy is, is in December when we come together for our Christmas party and I can give things away and I can give bonuses and I can see them be happy around each other and, and make them better personally and professionally, which is what's happening in our business right now. And it's really incredible to see people who never thought that they could make the kind of money that they do make more and just do things that they didn't think was possible and motivate people to do that yeah. and give back. So it's pretty cool. Very good, good for you. So again, it seems like um, joining that mastermind uh, you know, again, people watching this, they're going 25 grand. What, what the heck's this guy thinking? But again, for you, it was probably the, the moment that set you up for success. Cause if you don't do that, you're probably, we're probably not talking today. Is that fair? I had a hundred percent. Yeah. Guaranteed. Um, I, I probably would have quit, uh, to be perfectly honest with you. I, I don't know. If, I, 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 I'll tell you what, I, I'd even go back a little further and I would never have a goal like that. Like, uh -huh. I didn't know there were people that were making a million dollars a year. I wanted to be a millionaire in my lifetime. Right. You know, and I, I didn't even know it was possible to make a million a year. These guys are saying, oh yeah, we did like two, three million. And I was like in a year yeah. and it was just crazy to me. So like the, the glass ceiling above my head just got destroyed. Yeah. There's no limit to, to what our potential is and what our income can be and what we can do as, as human beings and individuals and together as a team. So that was the biggest thing for me. And then the mindset shift that I got from that is a game changer, just not even in my business, but in my life. You know, everything that I do has changed. Uh, the people that I spend time with, you know, what I put into my body, what I read, what, what I spend time doing, um, it's really just shifted everything for me. And I, I honestly think that I could be dropped on the corner of any street in any city with no money in my pocket and start a business tomorrow. So uh, I got a, like a full fledged MBA, um, uh, of actual business owner, um, right. feelings, right? not going to, uh, get an MBA from a school that's going to tell me what I could do afterwards, like getting like true hard knocks experience from that. And, and the motivation, I, I, anyway, I believe in it, uh, yeah. a million times over. And I talk to people all the time about our group and what we do because they, they look at it as an expense and it's not an expense. It, it's, it's an investment in yourself and your business. And it's, I mean, you look at college, um, you can yeah. go to college and, and I'm a, I'm a big proponent of college. My, my kids will be going to college. I have a, I have an undergrad uh, engineering degree and I have a master's degree as well. And so, I, I mean, I, I've done a lot of school. We spent a lot of time uh, in the, in, uh, in book learning and things, but right. I, I, we, you could spend $30,000 a year going to college and you're not making any money doing it. You know, right. it, th this is a, a $30,000 like master's or PhD education uh, around people who are just killing it in the business. If you find the right place for you and a cultural fit and what you want to do, um, you're making, I mean, I, I paid someone $25,000 that year 
to show me, like open the door, show me everything that they're doing. I made, we made $670,000 the first year of profit. That's not a bad return. So, That's okay. <laughs> it, it's pretty good. I'd like, to, I'd like to go around to any college in the United States or anywhere for that matter and ask them if they, uh, what they're making their first year of college. Yeah, it's not so. <laughs> um, yeah, so, and I, I get it. I mean, it's an event, but if you believe in yourself and you want to grow this business and, and you can get into one of these, like nah, I couldn't get in. It's the same thing. I went to Georgia Tech. I say the same thing. Like, if I applied to Georgia Tech today, I, they wouldn't let me in. But back yeah. then they did. Yeah. It was the same thing with this group. So, um, so yeah, I get it. It's a, it's a big price tag. And when I talk to people, they say, oh, that, that's crazy, Dude, that hurts. Man. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing, you know? Yeah. And that's fine. I yeah. mean, you, if you're making good money, you keep making $100,000. But, yeah. you know, I went from six seventy to $1.3 to $2.3 million, So, yeah. Um, in yeah, keep, keep making your hundred. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, do you want to give your, your, your group a shout out if you want to tell who it is? Oh uh, yeah, sure. It's so, um, so the owner of the company, his name is Justin Williams. Uh, it's called house flipping HQ. So we have a, a couple different mastermind groups, six figure flipping, seven figure flipping and eight figure flipping. So um, it's, it's a, it's a really great community. We do an event called flip hacking live every year. It's um, that, that, that price of price of that ticket is a lot less than a mastermind group. And if you're, if, if you're, you know, rubbing uh, quarters together, um, I would highly encourage people to go to that event. It's called flip hacking live. Um, it is three days of uh, some of the most incredible stuff. Uh, I, I can't announce who we're bringing on stage next year for our, our keynote uh, yet because I don't have a signed contract with them, but it's a, uh, it's a big name in the um, uh, leadership uh, development uh, side of things. So, Really cool stuff that that we're doing, and and just so just so you know, and everybody knows, I, I I'm the COO of that company now. So I, I I help Justin run that company. I did three years as a member of that group, and now he's uh, hired me to come on. And I was a coach for um, two years ago. I became a coach after about a year and a half in the, in the mastermind group, and then um, last year I said I want to do more. And so I spend I might do three to five hours of my business, and I spend the other forty working for him. So um, I never said I said I. I'm probably at the point where I don't think I'm employable, but, um, <laughs> but I, but I, I am now. So I just, you know, I think we get to a point where we do what we enjoy. Like I, I have to work because it's just the person I am. Yeah. Um, and I want to work because I want to, not because I have to. So, um, you know, doing the things that we like doing, it's not really work. And, yeah. you know, being around all these people and giving back to them the way that they gave to me, uh, yeah. helping them grow their business. There's nothing more rewarding than helping somebody grow their business. Sorry, yeah, my okay. assistant showed up and my dog barked. Yeah, that's so. all right. I got, I got one of those little noisemakers myself. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about the future. What, where do you see yourself three to five years? Are you still five hours in your business? Uh, um, you on six yeah. days? What are, you, what are you doing? Mike, you got to give me one second to open the sure. door. Okay. Hold on no a second. Oh, sorry. Hey, I'm still on. I'll be, uh, I'll be on in a minute. Okay. Um, yeah. Just like the person I am, I said, oh yeah, I'll unlock the door before you get here. And uh, of course I forgot. <laughs> um, uh, okay. What was the question you asked me? Three, Sorry, three to five that. years. Where are, you, where are you taking this thing? Going six states? You're going to, you know, you're going <gasps> to do five million. What, what, what is, what is three to five years look like for you? Yeah, I think so. Right now I think we're kind of in that, um, we still want to grow a little bit, but I'm in more of a state. So w when you're growing a business, you're, you're spending more money to grow oh, yeah. your business. Um, so so what I find is, you know, me as the business owner, eventually I want, in the beginning, I actually just, I didn't pull any money out. I had a full-time job. I just kept dumping everything in. Uh, it was loans back to the company as we were growing and scaling and everything. So um, I've, I've been able to get all of my money back out now over the past, uh, after like year, one and a half, two years. And so now really, I think I, I, we're, we're building out this foundation of the company um, to a point where we can, we can get big if we want to off of that foundation. Um, so I, I don't, I would say we're going to continue to do what we're doing. Um, and what I, I would like to do, I'd like to build more of a passive portfolio. So, uh, whether that's, uh, you know, multifamily development, something like that. But, um, I really like the idea of what these guys are doing with these turnkey rental properties and, and basically just turnkeying them to myself. So I, you know, I, I want to buy, you know, uh, I'd like to buy every house that comes across our desk in Pensacola. It's just not realistic, right? Yeah. Uh, and there's some great opportunity there and the returns are really good for some of these smaller houses. 
Um, but building that out is a whole other business, you know, a, a property management company combined with a, a construction, you know, so those yeah. two things are things that I absolutely shriek when I hear. So, but um, I, I, I don't know, I kind of like a challenge. Uh, I'm an engineer, so I like to play with things and tweak things. So if there's not a problem on my business, I usually create one. Um, <laughs> So I think, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think, you know, our, our, we have, we have, we use traction in our business. So we have, you know, we have a one year, three year, five year, 10 year stuff. Um, and, you know, eventually we want to get to a point, but honestly, like, I don't care. Like those kind of numbers are great, but that's not really my focus. What, what I want to do is I want to figure out how to make an impact and give back, okay. whether it be um, in what we're doing with my people. So I, I teach a financial class to my staff. Um, uh, yeah, maybe like once every two weeks, once every three weeks. Okay. Um, so they can come learn about taxes and investments and, um, W2 wow. versus 1099 and money and stuff like that. Um, and so things like that, like that's really way more important to me. Um, you know, awesome. giving back, we want to give, we want to give away two houses this year. I want to give away five next year. I want to give 10 the year after that. So that's all like the, the, we got this revenue goal. Yeah. And from there, you know, we want to work backwards and figure out how, you know, how we can make an impact on the community and really, really investors. Like I want to motivate other investors in our mastermind group and people that know me to say, Hey, like if you can't give away a house, like we want to buy a house, fix it up. And I know that you saw that. So buy a house, fix it up, give it away a hundred percent. Like that's it. Just, we're not going to give away the profits. We're not going to, you know, give away, uh, you know, the house and let somebody else fix it. We want to fix it up just like we would any other flip that we do with granite and really nice uh, up and, and, and give it away. And so to do that, um, it, it's, it's either going to take money, relationships, big business, like get in with Lowe's or Home Depot to donate all the, um, give us grants on uh, materials and things like that. I mean, we spend like a couple million dollars there a year. We should get some grants for this. Right? <laughs> you would think. Um, but then, then motivate, uh, you know, other investors to say, Hey, can, why can't you do that in your market? You know, cause, uh, my mentor, he motivated me. He, this, this organization right here, uh, operation underground railroad, we brought into our event at flip hacking live and we raised $150,000 for them in, uh, wow. in like a couple hours. It was really powerful, really incredible. They get, uh, kids out of select, uh, sex trafficking, sex slavery all around the world. Um, awesome. so he gave away his profits on a flip to them. I saw it like four years ago and I said, I, one day I'm going to do that. Like when I'm at a position to do it and I don't need the money and we don't need to, you know, grow this business, we're going to do it. And then, you know, I want to take it up a notch, take it to the next level. And I want to push other people to do it too. Like, why can't we do that? You know, yeah. we're not just here, um, you know, to make a ton of money. We're here to make an impact. So impact. for me, I would say my answer to your question, long winded answer, three to five years, I want to be making a bigger impact in our community and the investment community too. And, uh, and also like, I want to show my kids that, you know, the word real estate investor is not really a bad word. It's not uh, a dirty which, word. Yeah. It seems to be that that's kind of the case when, you know, um, when we talk to most people, uh, yeah. I don't want to be ashamed of what I do. I don't want to, anybody to think that we're being underhanded or sleazy. Like I want to, uh, you know, figure out how we can, you know, motivate people. And there's a lot of great people in the industry. So yeah. um, figuring out how we can like, push each other to do more to give back is, is I think one of be the most important thing for me. That's awesome. And I can already see you doing that. I look forward to, to watching it and, and, you know, seeing what's coming. It's, it's, it's amazing to watch somebody who's been successful and motivated with you sort of flip from building and growing a business to really focusing on impact. And, and I've already can see you doing that. And um, I can hear it in your voice that that's important to you. So um, uh, it's going to be fun to watch. So as we wrap this up, I always turn it over to the guests to sort of share whatever you'd like. Uh, again, about your business, talk more about giving away the house. I know, I think you have a, a uh, you're looking for donations to that. Why don't you talk about that if you don't mind? Yeah. So, um, so I think, I think the biggest thing that, you know, any, for me, it's, I only want, I would only want somebody to donate if you can't do something yourself. Like, um, I, I'm going to raise the money. Um, I, I'm sure of it. And if not, I'll just, I'll just give yeah. it all. Um, but so it's going to, it's going to take a, this, this house that we're giving away. It's a, it's, it's a three bedroom, two bath house. It's about 1300 square feet, uh, maybe 1400 square feet when we get done with it. It'll be worth about $145,000 for the person who, who gets it. I think, so we bought it. Um, I, I put in, I've already, I donated $30,000 towards this before the end of the year. And, um, I think it's going to take us, it, the house caught on fire. It's got, it's in horrible condition. It's probably going to take us about 90 to a hundred thousand dollars all in 
to um, to fix this thing up and get it ready to go. I mean, we have to gut the entire house and yeah. redo everything. Um, in fact, we we just found out we had to replace a bunch of trusses because they were heat damaged too much. So we had to Ouch. rip like the whole 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 half the half the house off right now. So um, so that's why I think the numbers are so big on it. But um, that's that's it. Like um, I got a Facebook page that um, you know anybody can go to and and take a look at what we're doing. Um, so my, my company Facebook page has it on there. It's called Blackjack Real Estate. And for those of you who who don't know us or, or what we're doing, we're giving this house away to a Gold Star family um, or a combat wounded veteran. So you know, being in the military for 15 years, I'm still a reservist. I still go down to Pensacola and fly part time. Um, and to me, that was the, the biggest impact that I thought I could make is um, somebody and a Gold Star family is somebody who, who lost a loved one um, in combat. So you got uh, usually have a, a wife and kids that are left behind um, with the main breadwinner has passed away. And um, maybe they got some insurance money, but they really, you know, it's it's not it's not going to sustain you for, for life. And I've lost. Um, I can count on two hands the people that I've lost in uh, flying helicopters and airplanes uh, in the last 15 years. And so um, I've seen the family, I've seen what it does to people. So I, it, it's just so cool this, and we partnered with an organization who, um, um, who has a, a, a 503, so they can take the donations and get uh, tax write-offs for us. They also find the, the person who is gonna get the house and they work with them for three years. Uh, they put them in the house, they make sure their finances are in order, and then three years later, they uh, deed the house over to them. Uh, nice. So when they're financially stable, they, it's clear that they can follow the plan, and they're not going to lose the house or sell it or something like that. Then, uh, so they do all the back end work, which is really amazing. So ten thousand dollars of that goes towards all the counseling and everything like that uh, towards the house. So um, that's what we're doing. It's called the Military Warrior Support Foundation. But if anybody wants to check it out on Facebook, you can go to Blackjack Real Estate and find us. I think it's facebook.com slash blackjack estate. And you can see kind of our donation link on there. Um, it's got a big you know, flag of a gold star on there you know, with the red outline. So if you ever see that on a car, um, that's somebody who lost. A, it could be like a, a son, a grandson, a, 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 a husband, a wife. Um, so those are... Um, those are like the bumper stickers on the car for us to pay attention to. You know? Absolutely. So, um, but that's, that's what we're doing. And uh, I think it would be incredible if, but you know, I'd, I'd much rather motivate you guys to figure out what you can do in your own market um, and for yourself and, and give some impact. But it, you know, I really want to, if the people, you know, want to be involved in that, want to be a small part of it, then they can give us some money and we'll put it to good use. Um, but I only want that if you can't, like, I want to challenge you to go do the same thing in your market or figure out how, or partner up with a couple people and, and, and do something, um, in your community, because, uh, I think this is going to better Pensacola. I think it's, um, it's, it's going to better the investment community. And once I do one, like, just like this, like doing that first house, once we yeah. do one game over, we, we can do, we'll do two, we'll do five, we'll do 10, we'll figure it out and we'll build a system around it. And it's going to be a whole nother business. You know, yeah. how do we, I don't know. Maybe we're going to have a, our own nonprofit here soon. So we'll see. Very cool. Very cool. Well, I want to thank you for your time. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, I appreciate you uh, setting, uh, setting some, some time uh, aside for me. Absolutely. Yeah. And thanks for having me. I know it took some, uh, took some effort for us to get together, but um, uh, I'm glad it's quiet for both of us on New Year's Eve. So there you go. All right, man. Thanks again. Yeah. Thanks.